We have just finished watching the Blue Man Group at Shea's Theatre. It was incredible. Changing my body position determined how fast or slow I fell through the air. Hey guys, it's Jess here. We're here at the Sugden Sports Centre. We've got an inside feature for the MMU men's volleyball team. Let's go have a look. From classic diner dishes to vegan meatloaf, the lake effect has it all. There have been advertising mass gatherings all around the UK and Bournemouth Beach being one of those locations. Luckily, as you can see behind me, not many people have heeded to that. People here, you probably see some families, they are keeping to the two meter social distance. Luckily, if they do do that and they carry on, we will be able to enjoy more sunny days at the beach. Jess Stoddard, Bournemouth. Businesses across the country have been affected by the coronavirus. After the government's decisions to start easing the restrictions, local companies have begun to reopen. The cafe in Sandbanks opened its doors on Thursday. Many businesses around the country have had to close their doors for good due to the lockdown. Having been closed for nearly two months, it's been tough on the economy. It's really, really hard. Obviously, uh, the car park was shut for a really long time. So, and the sound banks, you know, you don't really come down here unless you're going to do something. So, really, really difficult. Um, obviously, it costs money for staff, and you have to sell enough coffees to make it. It's really, really hard. It's been really difficult. To mark the opening weekend, the CAF hired a singer to entertain the crowds in the sunshine. We just wanted to bring a bit of bit of light to everyone, it's been quite a depressing time, a um, bit of buzz in the air and uh, just trying as I said to keep things difficult, marking out everything and making sure we're keeping to the rules but we just wanted someone to have something to do. To begin with, the cafe will be open 10 till 4 Thursday through Sunday, serving hot and cold drinks as well as cakes, sandwiches and fish and chips. We just want it to be a good buzz here at the end of the day um, and everyone can feel, feel happy. Jess Stoddard, Paul. Valentine's Day may get the reputation of being a commercial holiday, but the exchanging of Valentine's Day cards goes back further than you can imagine. The one I think goes back to 1859, the, the postmark, and then they're up until the 60s maybe is the latest ones. Yeah. For the past 50 years, Mr. Sandora has bought a vintage Valentine's card for his wife. I bought a Valentine for her with a car with a radiator that sort of came out, it was a three-dimensional. You'd go to the drugstore and they were all the same, but these were special. The collection has over 300 antique Valentine's Day cards. They're just fantastic. I mean, probably one of the best collections in the world of transportation related, be it cars, bicycles, motorcycles, uh, all different uh, walks of life uh, with animals and all kinds of cool things that people knew were important to their loved one and they'd send them a send them a valentine. There are lots of other things to check out at the museum, including a Frank Lloyd Wright filling station. The collection is based on Buffalo history of automotive and bicycle and motorcycle transportation. And it's not just cars. Some people think it's cars, but it's the same type of memorabilia, all types of memorabilia. So if you're looking for something to do with your loved one, check out the Tokens of Affection display, open through till March. Jeff Stoddard, News 4. When you think of landmarks here in Buffalo, it would be hard to ignore the deep roots of Shea's Performing Arts Center. The theater has been around for nearly a century and certainly has had its ups and downs throughout the years. But with all the work being put into it today, the future is looking brighter than ever. We're lucky to have this beautiful restored theater that uh, some very smart people many years ago said, let's save for Buffalo. It's hard to believe that at one point in the 60s, this theater was almost bankrupt and on its way to turning into a parking lot. And there was a period of time when things were pretty dark, right? They were going to knock this place down. And uh, the fact that it was saved, it's, the community really rallied behind Shays at that, at that time. For the last 20 years, restoration was the main focus. Donations from local foundations, along with self-funding and the support from the loving city of Buffalo, has given Shays the ability to shift its current focus into giving its viewers the best show they possibly can. We needed to expand our stage or we would not have been able to accommodate that type of show because of the scale of it. And so because of that vision and foresight and expanding 
our stage and building the stage house, we can now handle Wicked, Hamilton, Phantom of the Opera. On a Tuesday morning, this is what the stage looks like. Tuesday night, Hamilton's on stage. From the outside looking in, people are unaware of what really goes on when it comes to piecing a show together. During a typical show, you have uh, drops, these pipes that you see, they, uh, they come in and out all the time. And you know, there's stuff coming in our head. There's, with automation, there's scenery that flies in and out from the wings. And sometimes you're in total darkness when this is happening because the lighting out. So you have to be very, very aware of what's going on. About 90 feet above the audience, on top of the dome over the balcony seated area, is a walkway within the ceiling. It leads all the way through the roof and into the backstage area surrounded by suspended cables and years of collected dust. I always like to think of it like a beehive. You know, there's all these people buzzing around backstage. Uh, we get to see as a patron or as an audience member, you get to see the finished product. But behind the scenes, all the people that make it possible, uh, that's a show unto itself. Shays has a very strong season ticket holder base, and that helps them attract some of the biggest touring shows in the country. It has made Buffalo a top 10 touring market for Broadway, bringing in blockbusters from around the globe. Right now, we, after years of working at it, you know, every show loves coming here. Greats like Frank Sinatra, Jerry Seinfeld, and Jeff Dunham have made it a point to get to Buffalo to perform. That energy is being translated in a great way for the future. And let me tell you, it's wonderful to be back at Chase, and I mean that quite sincerely. I've been on a few stages in my career, and I can tell you that Shays does stand out in the crowd. There's a magic to this building. There's a history that's rich and deep. Um, and you can see anything from um, the funniest comedian to an extraordinary live, more intimate performance that you, that you won't get, um, uh, you know, if you, not to say that you shouldn't go to arena concert shows, but there's something different about a 3,000 seat theater. With potential upgrades on the rise, Shays has become a sight to see and created an entertainment capital of Buffalo. There are not many places out there quite like it. We'll be uh, conducting a capital campaign for our next big capital project, which is a five-story elevator tower building. Adding an elevator and upgrades will cost about $10 million. The entire building will be made more accessible for anyone who has trouble walking up and down the stairs. More bathrooms and concession stands will also be added. And we want to uh, build upon that and keep building for the future so that in 100 years from now, people will be talking about what happened a long time ago, just as we thank Michael Shea for what he did. As Shea's approaches its 100th year anniversary, supporters hope the advancements they have planned will secure the theater's future in our community to remain a staple for another century or more. For someone who hasn't been to Shea's and is wondering what the theater experience is like, it might be worth checking out. You can be laughing one moment, crying the next, but you're still experiencing someone's story and sharing in that story. And the fact that we're able to do that here, we're a place of sharing, of, of story making, of reflection, that's pretty wonderful. England is a land of shepherd's pie, bangers and mash, and fish and chips, and Buffalo's a land of chicken wings, pizza, and beef on whack. We took News 4 intern Jess Stoddard, who is from England, out to take in the sights, sounds, and most importantly, tastes of the Queen City. We tried out All Rick's Tavern on Ellicott Street, the oldest bar in Buffalo. We have a reputation to uphold, so we're not going to, you know, wing it as far as the food quality goes. You're having a drum, but do you think drums or flats are better? Ooh. Actually, I have to admit, I think flats are better. Oh! Alright, so on to the next one. What do we think about the... Should we go fish and chips? Let's go fish and chips. The batter is amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. 
And the fish is really flaky, it's really nice. What is the difference that you say between, you know, yours versus something like this? Well, I mean, one thing I've noticed is they use a lot of, like, beer batters here. You put a lot of beer in batters, and I don't, well, depending on where you go in England, they sometimes do that. But, I don't know, it's just a bit lighter. Awesome. How about the sides? Does it come with mac, and, mac salad and potato salad? Generally, or is it just chips? Um, so usually, you get your fish and chips, and then mushy peas. Yeah. Yeah, which is literally just like <laughs> green garden peas. That doesn't sound good. Mashed. <laughs> like hey, hey, wait until you try it. Don't knock it till you try it. Yeah. Okay, on to the last one, we have dun -dun -dun -dun, beef on wet. The amount of salt on that bun. <laughs> It's a heart attack in, in, a, in, a, in a roll. I love it. But that's okay. That's okay. I love, love it. it. All right. Let's try it. Mm. All three of these, what would you have to say is your favorite dish? I'd probably have to say the fish and chips. Oh. Okay. I Guys, <laughs> we win fish and chips from the Brit. This is <laughs> Buffalo's best right here. Revolutionary. If you want to try any of these three Buffalo staples, Come downtown to Albert's Tavern on Ellicott and Virginia Street. In the meantime, we're gonna finish this food. We love our interns. We are for our interns. I'm Kelly Katib. I'm Kelly Lynch. And I'm Jess Stoddard. News 4.